if there are alternatives that can fix the problem that are not policies on health care, then that flows more towards the negative side, being able to say, we don't need your plan. This is what we need. Yeah. And if let, if we start here and we find vast improvement, then your plan is going to be either less needed or not needed at all. Yeah. And uh, the care is less expensive. The high cost listed um, in, in the case, how much of that is medications that are expensive? How much is it the per hour fee? I tried to look up... Um, online uh, uh i mean i was i was trying to find evidence or articles about how much of mental health care is not evidence based that is people spend a boatload of money they don't get better they like talking to the psychiatrist or psychologist but how effective is it what i found instead was a bazillion article saying people with mental illness don't have access to evidence-based mental health care. So I couldn't find anything negative. It was all the advocates for more spending on more mental health. Yeah. Um, but there's, you know, there's sort of no upper limit on that. I don't want to deny that people, people are depressed, anxious, and have very serious problems. But how effective is the treatment in prisons you know, before the cuts and how effective would it be under the case? What I'd like to do, and I, I should stop now, I'll have links to the sources on this, but what I'd like to do is invite people from the Bazooki Fund, the Metabolic Mind people, I'll reach out to them and ask them if they have people who have expertise in providing nutritional therapy in prisons. There are a number of websites that focus on improving food in prisons and all this, and I'll, I'll link to those in the what do they call it? The show notes as if it's a show rather than just two yeah. guys talking. <laughs> but uh, I'll link to that and you can read more about it because it's, yeah, you, 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 they're arguing one, it's cruel and unusual to not give them mental health care if they need it. And you can make the same case if you're giving people food that are making them sick, whether it's in a public school, a prison, uh, military, or at a homeschool debate tournament, you want to... <laughs> You want to have food that nourishes the body and the mind of student, not just, you know, satisfies them for 10 minutes before they're hungry again. Yeah, there are no empty calories. Uh, you, the, cal the, the type of calories do make a difference. And the, the, uh, what's in your food makes a difference on how you feel and how you act. And that, that's definitely true. We should have a, we could have a test where we give X number of students beef sticks and the others something that is looks like a beef stick but isn't and then compare who wins the most in debate when they have the beef stick versus the fake beef stick and then we'd have a uh, randomized control trial there you go uh, you yeah label each one and although this the c.s lewis uh, comment is that pe people generally disapprove of experimenting on students yes uh, which is why they send them instead to experimental schools right <laughs> or experiment on prisoners Right, right, yeah. <laughs> so, but, you know, given if you take them where they are, what they're getting now, and offer them something better, then you're not intentionally harming someone. You're instead testing, if we provided a more nutritious alternative in a prison, a veterans hospital, a debate tournament, would it improve the mental functioning of the students, the happiness, the human flourishing, less impulsive behavior, we could have uh, decibel readings around the debate tournament to see if it's quieter because people aren't screaming as much, <laughs> uh, whatever measure we choose. But yes. I just want to open the door to this discussion of uh, mental health, depression, anxiety that appears to be linked to nutritional improvement and just show these studies and conferences and, and the people doing this research because uh, the the Bazookis are a, a, a well-to-do family in the Ro Roblox, I guess, computer uh, uh, business. Their son had a severe mental health breakdown in college and could have been lack of sleep, drinking drugs, partying, who knows, but he went off the deep end. They spent a long time trying to get him therapy and medications. And only after a couple of years of trying everything did they connect with this idea of just changing his diet. And with the help of, uh, I think, Dr. Palmer, Chris Palmer, uh, he went into nutritional ketosis and recovered, shockingly recovered. And now he's a spokesman for 
therapeutic nutritional ketosis for severe mental illness. And, you know, for young people with severe mental illness, they're probably not going to be at the debate tournament and, you know, and things like that. But I don't know. Uh, I've seen some. Maybe some. <laughs> But, uh, you know, things like ADHD, there's a movie called The Pill, where they took these uh, autistic young people and fixed their diet, and the recovery was amazing. Now, it was just three yeah. students, and maybe it's anecdotal and so forth, but it's a it's a fascinating area. And the, the, the last one I'll leave you with and we'll link to is uh, a website, a young woman runs a website called Living Well with Schizophrenia with huge numbers of followers. She's very appealing. And she would talk about her journey trying to deal with her schizoaffective disorder, the medications, the challenges with her husband and her child. And then in January this year, after she has 100,000, huge number of followers, January, she meets, learns about Chris Palmer and some other metabolic health practitioners. She begins to try this diet of just cutting all the carbs out of her diet. And she feels better. And she begins this process with all her medical providers of, of reducing her medications for a schizoaffective disorder gradually. And she chronicles this on her website. And uh, now she's got a new problem, which she's no longer schizophrenic. She's It's in remission. And she's had to rename her website. Be and, <laughs> and again... <laughs> She didn't expect a cure. She just thought, how can we live well with this chronic condition? And that's what her followers were following her for. But she found that she could, and also surprising her is her doctors sort of didn't care. You know, yeah. when she went off her last bit of her high level medication, the doctor's response was, well, if, you know, if you don't feel right, just go ahead and start taking it again. <laughs> and, you know, she turns to the camera and she's not saying he doesn't care. He's a professional and that's what he does. And he's giving her medical advice, but she doesn't want to be on these medications the rest of her lives. She never, her life, she never thought she could get off them through dietary changes. Yeah. And her doctor, you know, didn't necessarily oppose her, but was less than enthusiastic of experimenting with going off these medications that very few people go off of. So it's an amazing story and I think relevant for people who are severely mentally ill in prisons. Do they have access to therapeutic nutritional ketosis and counseling? And if they don't, uh, that might be a better way to resolve this problem than spending vast amounts of money, which your expensive affirmative case seems to call for. Yes. Yeah. And so all of that to say that, I mean, there, I think there is a case just based upon your research and what you're saying that nutrition could be healthcare. And, and so that would require a lot of digging in a lot of research, but there could be a case, uh, there, there could be a case made that nutrition is healthcare because of, you know, getting into the whole aspect of ketosis, under a maybe even a medical doctor or a nutritionist, uh, uh, careful eye, and seeing what that does. And so, yeah, do the research. Maybe build a case on that. That could be uh, some great alternatives. So, yeah, thanks. It to totally the opposite of supersize me would be my guess. So yeah, and you know the supersize me. That's just a. There's always one thing leads to another, but the supersize me. Uh, he did that show without revealing he had mental illness problems and all these problems beforehand. And he didn't just eat hamburgers. He ate the sodas. And right. so another guy did the same movie, the same thing. He, um, and I'll link to it. He went to fast food for a year and ate the meat. He lost 30 pounds and got healthy. The meat is healthy. The bun and all the sugar is not so healthy. But yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, thanks, Greg. Uh, as always, great to talk to you, and uh, uh, we'll we'll keep keep doing these uh, uh, updates and podcasts. Uh, hopefully, each week this year. And um, thanks a lot for all your digging in and research and help and all you do. Well, thank you, thank you.